Welcome to my channel and another art journal tutorial. So I'm starting in my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media Journal. I believe this page has been gessoed and I've taped off the edge to get a clean edge. I'm coming in with this Kaiser Craft honeycomb stamp and I'll put a link to it and any other specialized products, stencils that I've used. This is a homemade swirl stamp that I've made and I put it on a pill bottle. And I'm just using my permanent archival ink here in black. I just want to build some interest in the background. Not really sure where this is going to go. But I did want to use yellow and quinacridone magenta and I wanted to get kind of an orange and my goal was to have yellow in the top corner where it blends in orange in the middle and red, kind of an ombre kind of effect. And I'm just applying this with a makeup sponge and blending it right on the page. And I know I'm going to come back and do a lot of stenciling on top of this, so I'm not too worried if there are marks or if it's perfectly even because there's just this is just that initial color lay, layer. And I'm just giving it a dry with my heat tool. This is this stencil is called Screen View, and I love this stencil for the effect that it gives, either with modeling paste, which I'm applying right now, or just stenciling, which I believe I do afterwards. And I just want to get some of this texture into onto this page. This is a good stencil to use. It's very non-specific. It will go on a multitude of pages regardless of the theme. This is another new from the Crafters Workshop. And I'm just stenciling on in various places. This one's Celtic design and I decided to go in with black because I realized that I'm not I don't often use black in at this stage and I thought oh you know try something different and it's this edition of black which I like but that throws off my other plans Spoiler alert. But I like the contrast that's that I've gotten here. We've got the black, we've got the white. This is another favorite stencil, fantastical. But before I do that, I'm coming back with some screen view. And I often do that. If I use modeling paste with something, I also come in and I stencil with it. Or I use two different colors with the same stencil. With this page, I'm just having a bit of a play. I have no particular... Well, I did have a plan. But... You know, I'm just grabbing different stencils and applying them and just go seeing where the page is taking me. Now I wanted, I didn't want the white from the modeling paste, so I'm just colorizing that by using the makeup sponge and rubbing the yellow or the pink or blending to make the orange on top of the modeling paste. And because I got rid of all the white, now I'm coming in with this fantastical stencil, which I love this motif there. That is just one of my all-time favorites. And I'm just putting that. And I'm trying to turn the stencil so that it's going this way and that way. I love that round, the curves, just everything about that shape just makes me happy. And I really love this background.
it's got black, it's got white, it's got the colors that are blended. Adding some script. But then it came to what I had planned to do for my focal image. And this is where you come to that crossroads where an idea and what you have in front of you may not necessarily mix. But I decided to go with my idea. Here's a picture of the page before I move any further. And I often take pictures of backgrounds. Now my goal was to put, use this Happy Dandelions and stencil in black or with modeling paste. But because I have modeling paste down below, I decided I'm just going to stencil on with black. And because I put black in the background, I was going to not do this. But I thought, you know what, let's just give it a try. Go with your initial thought. And we'll see what happens. And because there's the black in the background, these flowers just get lost on this background. And you can see I'm tapping my fingers and I'm thinking, oh, this is not what I like. So I very quickly grab a baby wipe and I wipe that black stenciling of the Happy Dandelion stencil right off. And you can see it takes some of the paint off as well. But I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, worst case scenario, I can do just a coat of gesso. But I thought, you know what, let's just try putting some more color back on. And I grabbed that makeup sponge that I had there. I still had some yellow and quinacridone magenta. And I'm just covering it up. So I'm, I'm going over top of the white because I couldn't avoid it. It's like, okay, obviously this background is not done yet. So I'm just playing with it. I'm building up the colors. And I really do still like this background. It isn't at all where I wanted to start with the ombre. It's more blended. But I'm happy with it. I want to add some of the white back. So I grab my embroidery mesh, my plastic embroidery mesh, and I'm dipping it in there and pressing it on. And this goes really well with that screen view stencil. It's a smaller scale, but similar. And I quite like the effect that this gives. And because I've made errors along the way. This is so wonderfully layered. So since stenciling on top of this wasn't going to work, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do some negative painting. And I grabbed these stencils. I had my Christmas file out. These are stencils that I cut with the silhouette of Christmas ornaments. And I thought, you know what, we'll just do a Christmas one. And I grabbed, you know, I'm deciding to layer. Three is a nice number. And I'm tracing these out with my Stabilo All Pencil in black. And I'm just deciding there which one is going to go in front of which one. And this one I'm getting to go off the page a little bit. A few seconds ago, I said we're, I was going to do negative painting. And I do end up going there. But at this point, I thought, you know... I'm just going to shade around these and maybe that's all I will need to do. Maybe I won't have to get rid of the entire background, which you do with negative painting. Maybe just the shading will make it pop and I will call it done. So this is just another example of you don't always know where the page is going. So you do it one way and if it gives you the effect that you're happy with, you can stop and if it's not quite where you want it to be, then you go on and you add another layer. So I'm using the floating acrylic technique. And this is a technique I learned when I did folk art painting. 
and it's great for shading and highlighting. I'm using an angle brush and I will put a link to the video where I teach this technique specifically and I give some practice activities. Now because these, this is one of the videos that I was doing to get done before I had my hand surgery, it's later in the afternoon and November in on Vancouver Island is often very cloudy and it's rainy season and so the light is fading quickly so we have less than ideal lighting conditions and I apologize for that. You can see how this is popping and you know as I'm looking at it now I could have just left it as with that. It's standing up enough. I've made the focal image pop out from, from the back. I was going to continue shading around the outside edge now just to add a little bit more and make it pop just that little extra more. And then I decide, you know what? I am just going to do negative painting. I'm going to use the black and I'm going to paint out everything but the ornaments. The colors are so spectacular on these ornaments that I thought, you know what, that it's going to really stand out with a black background. And here I go. And nope, I'm going to paint it all out. And because there are so many layers in the back and there's modeling paste, the textures and some of the patterns that are in the background still show, even though I've painted this all black. It makes for a lovely setting for these three Christmas ornaments. And I find when I do the negative painting, the angle brush works really well to get along those straight edges. Now this background, I could have done negative painting with butterflies or stars, or hearts, or any shape that you choose to do. I also toyed with the idea of doing a flamingo on this page because of the colors that were in there. So once that's done, I grab my fine line bottle, and I've got gold mixed in here. And I find that Artist Loft paint doesn't do well in the fine line bottles. I do better with the Liquitex Basics. It just seems to stay, doesn't get clumpy. I'm just giving it an edge of gold here. Just adding some bling to the page. And the gold goes really well with the colors that the ornaments are. And you can just see the texture. And I'm turning the page to make it easier for me to use the fine line bottle. And I'm trying to avoid putting my hand into the wet paint. The negative painting technique is a good technique to use when you end up with a very busy background. I'm going to do some scratchy edging around the edge. Don't attempt to make a straight line, then if you wibble wobble a little bit, it doesn't show. And I decided in a rare case that I'm not even going to put a sentiment on here. But the sentiment that I would have is I should wish all of you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and thank you so much for joining me in my art journey and supporting me by watching my channel, by giving me thumbs up, by leaving comments. I appreciate every single one of you.
Keep watching, I've got some close-ups of the finished page and some recommended videos at the end. Bye for now. Happy creating.